Hello, this is Dr. Armand bringing you another exciting lecture in General Chemistry 1 Labs. Uh, in this lecture, we'll be discussing the Excel Lab, mainly talking about the conceptual part of the Excel Lab. So, how will you do the calculation part? We'll be looking at uh, dilutions and how do we calculate the concentration of a dilute solution. And then the second part, we'll be looking at Excel and how we go about graphing the data that we generate from the a virtual lab. And this is what you'll be doing in the Excel lab assignment. You'll be generating data from a virtual lab program, which you'll need to do dilutions, and then you'll also plot the data on Excel and do linear regression. So I'm going to show you how to do the calculations involving dilutions and also how to plot the data using Excel. So let's go ahead and get started. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So this is lab one, the Excel lab. And in this lecture, we're going to be looking at the calculations and how to plot data on Excel. So what is concentration of a solution? So concentration of a solution, a solution as you learn in Gen Chem, general chemistry one, is the uh, amount of solute in a given amount of solid, solvent. So a solu solution is composed of a solute and a solvent. So solute is the smaller amount. Solvent is the larger amount. And typically when we're dealing with aqueous solutions, the solvent is water. Now, for example, you take a cup of water and you put sugar in it and you dissolve the sugar in the water. So the sugar is the solute, the water is the solvent. Now, when we talk about concentrations, there are many different types of units. Just to talk about a few of those units, the one that you'll learn in general chemistry is molarity. Where molarity is the moles of solute over the liters of solution. Liters. So you'll learn more about that in uh, Gen Chem 1. The next ones are dealing with uh, percents. So we have percent mass volume and percent volume volume. So percent mass volume is the mass of solute over the volume of solution generally in milliliters. Whereas for volume, volume percent is the volume of solute over volume of solution. And of course, these are multiplied by 100. So in the Excel lab, we'll be dealing with volume, volume percent. So the volume of solute over volume of solution. And so what we're doing in this lab is we're doing dilutions. So we're going to be taking a solution, we're going to be diluting it, and then measuring the density of that solution. So what is meant by dilutions? So the dilution is a process of making a less concentrated solution from a more concentrated solution. So for example, let's say you have a can of uh, Coke. 
and you put ice, you, you pour this can into a glass. So you pour the can of Coke into a glass and you add ice. What happens over time, the ice melts, causing the Coke to be diluted, and you get that watery taste in the Coke you're drinking. So that's what we're doing with dilution, except we're doing it with solute. So the amount of solute remains the same, the amount of solvent increases. So before the dilution, after the dilution, if you count the number of red spheres, they're the same for both. So the amount of solute doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the amount of solvent. So the initial amount of solute and the final amount of solute are the same. The only thing again that changes is the solvent. And so we can use this equation, CIVI equals CFVF. So the initial concentration and the initial volume will equal the final concentration and final volume. And this is how we're going to determine how much of the concentrated solution we need in order to make a certain volume of a dilute solution. Now let's look at some examples. So here we have a 225 milliliters of a dilute solution of sugar prepared by adding 35 milliliters of a 75% uh, mass volume solution of sugar. What is the percent mass volume of the dilute solution? So the first thing we need to do is identify which ones are the initial concentration and volume and which ones are the dilute uh, uh, concentration and volume. So C initial is 75%, V initial is 35 milliliters. Uh, final concentration is what we're looking for because that's our dilute solution. Uh, the final volume of this dilute solution is 225 milliliters. So now we're solving for the final concentration. So we set up our equation and solve for final concentration. So we get that the final concentration is 11.7%. So when you take 35 milliliters of the 75% solution, add it to a 225 milliliter volumetric flask, and then fill the rest up with water till you get a total volume of 225 milliliters you'll have your 11.7% solution. Example two. So in example two, we want to know what volume in milliliters is required of a 85% salt solution, which is needed to prepare 125 milliliters of a 35% solution. So what we're looking for here is the volume of the concentrated solution we need to make our dilute solution. So again, we need to look at the initial concentration, which is 85%. So this is our C initial. We don't know our initial volume because that's what we're looking for. 
And our final concentration is 35%. And our final volume is 125 milliliters. Now we set up our equation. and solve for the final concentration, or excuse me, the initial volume of the solution that we, of the 85% solution. So again, what we're looking for is the initial volume of the 85% solution we need to make 125 milliliters of a 35% solution. And we get 51.5 milliliters. So we need 51.5 milliliters of the 85% solution to add to a 125 milliliter volumetric flask and then fill the flask up to the calibration mark with water and we have our 35% solution. Again, the answers to these questions are located in the notes sections of the slides. Slides, not slots. Example three here, we want to know how much water is used to prepare 150 mils of a 15% salt solution from a 60% salt solution. So we're going to make a 150 milliliters of a 15% salt solution. We want to know how much water we're going to have to add to the flask to make this solution. So again, we're going to see our initial concentration and initial volume. Initial concentration is 60%. Initial volume, we don't know, of the concentrated solution. The final concentration, we know. It's 15%. And the final volume we know, which is 150 milliliters. So we're going to do this in two steps. Step one, find the initial volume, so VI. Step two, find the amount of water. So let's solve for VI. So we have 60 times VI we get 37.5 milliliters. Now this is the amount of the 60% solution we need to make the 15% solution. So that's step one. Step two, we're gonna find the volume of water needed. 
So you take the volume of the dilute solution, which is 150 milliliters, and subtract the volume of the concentrated solution from it, which is 37.5 milliliters. We get 112.5 milliliters of water is needed. So to make a 15, 150 milliliters, excuse me, that was to make 150 milliliters of a 15% solution, we need 37.5 milliliters of a 60% solution and 112.5 milliliters of water. Let's go to example four. So in example four, a student wants to prepare a 27% sugar solution using 65 milliliters of a 70% sugar solution. What's the total volume of the dilute solution? So here we're going to use again CIVI equals CFVF. So C initial is 70%. V initial is 65 milliliters. C final, 27%. And we're looking for V final. V final. So now we solve for V final. We get 168.5 milliliters. So what does this mean? This means if we want to make a 27% sugar solution by using 65 milliliters of a 70% sugar solution, we're going to need to make 168.5 milliliters of this solution. So that concludes our little uh, introductory uh, lecture over the Excel lab, the type of calculations you will be doing for this lab. After watching this video, I strongly recommend you to work on the dilution problem assignment, which is similar to the calculations we did here. And then secondly, after you do that, make sure you watch over the Excel lab, uh, ex excuse me, Excel graphing video to see how we want the data to be graphed if you have difficulty with Excel. So on that note, that's all for this lecture. If you, uh, I hope you enjoyed the lecture. If you liked it, please hit the like button or if you learned something new, also hit the like button as well. Uh, that's it for now. This is Dr. Armand signing off.